my story um well you know i never had to figure out what i wanted to do with my life because i i always loved creating art from a very little child and you know even in grade school when you know all of my little classmates we were all developing our little personas and there was the most popular girl and the egghead and you know all the class clown i was always the class artist you know i was always the kid that, that people came to and you know i could draw them a picture and it was some magical ability that i had you know and um so i always knew that that's exactly what i wanted to do and um I went to um, San Francisco Art Academy and then um, Arizona State University and um, learned a whole lot about mixed media and just explored the vast range of all kinds of different kinds of media. You know, I tried a little ceramics, a little jewelry, a little um, weaving and, and um, eventually kind of gravitated towards doing sculptural fiber pieces. Totally different kind of art than what I'm doing right now, but... Um, kind of. I mean, it's but not it is, fiber, but it's it sculptural. Is it, yeah, it's sculptural, and it's something that I have to manipulate with my hands. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be something that's very important to me, is something I can actually grab a hold of, so... Okay. Um, and what is the difference between working with fiber and working with wood and, and found objects and, you know, more 3D right, right. objects. Um, I think that the 3D objects, the objects themselves um, are, are much more rep representational. Um, fibers, you can make beautiful shapes and textures and colors, but um, it's not really a representational kind of thing in, in that I'm not making a tapestry and making weaving a little scene. I was just making these wonderful fluid kind of um, sculptural shapes and relying on the, the, the movement of the um, forms and uh, the textures and colors. Um, and, um, but with, you know, with the objects, the, they have the ability, this wonderful ability to have um, this very wonderful kind of uh, symbolic or metaphorical content that people can really grab onto in a very sort of personal kind of way. Um, what I'm doing with my art is I'm creating stories and a lot of times I will use text, um, I will use um, maybe an axiom of some kind and um, and that's kind of like a speed dial sort of version of philosophy. <laughs> but but um, what it does is it's, it's describing some sort of universal human truth. And then what happens is that people will relate to the work in a way that's very personalized. And they will sort of see themselves in the stories that I'm telling. And um, that's always incredibly gratifying to me, that people connect to the work in the Academy. Art Academy. Yes. And then you went to Arizona? Arizona State University. Okay, and that was yeah. also for fine arts? Uh, yes, and I was in the fine arts department there, yeah. Okay. Fine arts and fine crafts, too. Ah, yeah. and what did you, was that where you started focusing on uh, textile, sculptural textile? Yes. Okay, and what yes, was it indeed. about this, the, the textile and, and this, that really um, drew you in? Mostly just the tactile quality of it. Okay. And, and just the challenge, too. How do you take 
fibers which have no you know intrinsic kind of uh, substance or form structure yeah and make them into something that is in fact sculptural structural and I figured that out <laughs> and what, what, what was it what did you do what I was doing is I was taking um, very very thick um, cotton piping cords and then in wrapping fiber around them and then um, uh, forming them into these huge kinds of sculptural pieces um, that had like a plywood backing to sort of give it some kind of rigid structure. Okay, so you were adhering it to the, but did you treat the cording at all to give it more structure? Because even though the cord mm. gets thick, it, it yeah. can get weighted down quite easily and collapse yeah. on you. Yeah, I actually found that the very best method of um, adhering the basically they were like ropes mm -hmm. and and the best way of adhering these ropes basically together was hot glue oh. and I did it in such a way that you never saw the hot glue of course mm -hmm. but it, it it really created this um, amazing structure Okay, so the glue became the secondary support system, yes. and then you used the plywood for the primary. Right. Okay, right. interesting. Right. right. And it also allowed me to do very large pieces, and I could also do them in several pieces and put, put them together so that they would fit together as a jigsaw puzzle. So, um, and that was, and that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and I I did a lot of commissioned work back then too, which I don't do anymore. Um, I mean that was that was great to do back then, um, and it, and the kind of work I was doing lended itself to doing big uh, commissioned work, and what I'm doing now not so much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, what made you go from Santa Fe to Boulder? Um. You know, it's hard to articulate exactly what makes a place feel like home, but, you know, as much as I appreciated Santa Fe, wonderful art town, incredible friends there. I mean, you know, so many wonderful things about it. It never felt like my home. Hmm. And I think that's because I was born and raised in the Midwest. And so Boulder, to me, has a much more Midwestern kind of flavor to it. And it's also closer to my family who lives in Nebraska. Okay. So, you know, it's... And the criteria is that I wanted to be in a small town, but that it had a lot of the cultural amenities of a bigger town. And Boulder well, has that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it works so, for me. If you grew up in Nebraska, did you go to San Francisco for art school? or yes. just Okay. Yes. So that was straight out of high school, you went to art school? Well, not exactly. I went uh, <laughs> because I knew that there was this vast world out there when I was growing up in Nebraska, and I knew Nebraska wasn't it. <laughs> um, I started writing these uh, pathetic kinds of letters to my, my oldest sister, who I'm writing the story with, by the way. And um, she was living in Berkeley at the time. Oh, okay. And I said, can I come out and live with you? And for some reason, my mother actually let me live, go and live with my oldest sister in Berkeley, California. This was in the late 60s when, you know, was, we, were the, we were the center of the revolution. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I went to live with my oldest sister for my last year in high school and graduated from Berkeley High School. Okay. Yeah. She must have known that you needed to get out and, and spread your wings. And she did, yeah. And I'm sure that your sister is a much safer place to go than it is maybe someplace else. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So oh, I yeah. think that was a calculated risk on your mom's I part. So. Yeah, exactly. I did have somebody looking out for me, so it was oh. good. Where do you see your art going from here? Um, if you move from you, you know, know fiber and yeah. and, and and structure mm -hmm. to wood and um, and more uh, sculptural elements, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and I am moving more and more towards completely freestanding um, okay. kinds of sculpture now, and um, and that's an incredible challenge too because there's a lot more engineering that happen has to happen when you make something that's it has to be 
totally viewed and, and you know, completely in the round. Mm -hmm. um, but I love that because, um, like for instance, some of the um, some of the pieces like that I have over here, mm -hmm. um, where I'm I'm making the anthropomorphic kinds of figures, um, and what I love is creating these kinds of creatures that all have their individual stories, and and sort of morphing the whole human animal kind of concept because a lot of a lot of times, I think. We forget the fact that we are, in fact, animals. <laughs> mm. And um, so you're trying to create a closer relationship between man and exactly. and its counterparts. Exactly. exactly. Okay. And why is that important to you? It is because um, I want us. I I want us to recognize and um, and be honest about all of the different facets of who we are and how we are in this world. Okay. And, and, and hopefully viewing these creatures um, will cause people to maybe question that a little bit. It's like, mm -hmm. why am I drawn to this? Why, why you know, what, how does this speak to me? It, yeah, it seems like we're going through another uh, developmental leap as a collective. One of the things that's kind of important about the whole mixed media thing um, and why I'm really, really drawn to it is that um, it, it really presents such an incredible challenge because in the art that I do, I have to know about such a broad, broad range of different techniques and different medias, you know. Um, I have to know power tools, I have to know um, paints, I have to know various different kinds of finishes, mediums, I have to know broad, broad spectrum of adhesives and um, and bring all of these materials and media together and these techniques together to create something that's a cohesive whole. And um, I love that because it's constantly throwing me into um, a state of, of unbalance because a lot of times I don't know what I'm doing. It's, you know, I'm attaching one object to another object to another object, and they're always different. So um, I love that I'm always just a little bit off balance <laughs> and always learning things. And that's why I'm. So tell me, the woman in Cornwall, why Cornwall? Because I think I remember reading about that on your website. Yes, yes. And um, what I wanted to do was, was put her in an, an, a very almost nostalgic and romantic kind of setting that, that, that she would come from. And, um, and also sort of a very out of the way kind of place in that she was very, very sheltered. And then... Um, an accident happens in her life and it propels her on a journey throughout the world basically and she has this these incredible adventures and and learns and grows and um, you know it has has just a remarkable journey and I sort of see that as an exaggerated version of what happens to us in our lives in that we all start out with these incredible plans for ourselves, like, I'm going to do this and that. And then reality takes its toll <laughs> and just sends us into, you know, directions that we had no idea we were going to be going in. And um, so in that respect, it has, uh, you know, great metaphorical value. And again, but that's um, an example of me creating um, objects big, that are sort of big representing narrative, which uh, I've always wanted to do. The single pieces, they're, the they're lovely and they, they tell their little succinct stories, but this is like a bigger story. And I'm, and you know, the story's still being written. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. writing it with my sister. I'm having a lot of fun with it.
Yeah, because I mean, you're, it sounds like you're literally creating text and then yes, you're going to do uh, sculptural representations as well. Right, right. Okay. Um, and all, nice. yeah, and it, it is nice because when we were growing up, uh, my sister and I um, used to write stories together when we were children. So this is... <laughs> yeah, full circle. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, people can, all humans can pursue what it is they they are passionate about, you know, with, with you know, without any of the prejudices that okay. stood in the way in the past. I mean, my, my parents <laughs> were an example of what gender roles you know, the violence that gender roles did to people. Um, and that my mother, she would have been a brilliant business person and my father would have been a great stay-at-home parent, mm. you know. But because they, they, you know, existed in the time in which, you know, that wasn't they were having okay. kids, it was like every, everything was prescribed. They, um, you know, they had roles that they were expected to live up to, and, and so they did, you know? It's like, but they mom very had happy. kids, <laughs> you uh -huh. know? And she stayed home with her kids, and my dad went to work. And now they were happy. And it just didn't suit their personalities at all. It wasn't who they were. So they were living a lie. And so I, I just hope that as humans we can get into a more truthful and honest kind of uh, experience of who we are. I hope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Did they ever find any way to resolve it? or? Uh, well, my father actually died when I was, I was quite young, when I was 13. And my mother did go get a job where my father worked. And she was much happier. <laughs> okay. Yeah you know, being in the corporate world. I mean, that was, that's who she was. That's what suited her. Yeah, yeah. yeah.